So next up, we're going to hear about um, a meme which has uh, propagated in the cryptocurrency space very often, which is scaling. Um, and in particular, in this talk, we're going to hear about doing it with um, succinct zero-knowledge proofs. Um, so from the Matter, Inc., uh, let's please give a warm welcome to Alex Glukowski. Thank you, Ben. Hi, I am. my name is Alex. I started working on Rollup with Ethereum Foundation, and then um, now I'm part of Matter Labs. And I'm going to talk about scaling solution called ZK Rollup. Um, so ZK Rollup, I, I, I was trying to explain it in a very short manner in one sentence. Uh, it's a layer two scaling solution. It's a um, sidechain, essentially, resembling Plasma MVP very much with two key differences. The first difference is that we save, uh, we solve the data availability problem by putting the data directly on layer one chain. Uh, we don't use storage, we just put the data there. We rely on Ethereum to broadcast the data to everybody. And the second, ch uh, second difference is that we replace fraud challenges of Plasma with zero knowledge proofs. So we, for each state transition, we provide zero knowledge proofs, which guarantee that everything we changed in the data is correct. Uh, we'll deep dive into the architecture a bit further, but let's see what it gives us, why it's, why it's cool. Uh, so first of all, we don't have any liveness assumption in our case, because the uh, state transitions are secured by zero knowledge proofs. Users do not have to monitor the chain and submit proofs that something is incorrect. Uh, and this is very good from user experience perspective. Uh, and we also achieve the same security guarantees as layer one, essentially. So I can just send my money into the side chain and go offline, and I'm, I can be sure that no matter what operator alive or not, I will always get the funds back if the layer one is secure. Uh, now, rollup is capitally, capital efficient um, compared to state channels or to some flavors of plasma, which require you to have additional capital at bonds. Or in case of Plasma, you need uh, some additional funds to exchange non-fungible coins. Uh, with Rollup, you can just have account-based model where you only store funds in sidechain, which you need. Um, the cool thing about storing data in, a, like, uh, uh, the cool thing about having data availability solved on the layer one chain is that we can have multiple operators in the Rollup, which guarantees censorship resistance. We don't have just one operator, like in some Plasma constructs, but we, we can have a rotating operatoring. Uh, and thus, we also have no need for mass exits. And interestingly, the operators themselves are not exposed to operational security risks. They never have to store the private keys on machines which, which are connected to the internet. All they do is provide proofs of things which everybody already knows. Uh, so, what are the limitations at the moment? Uh, we, because we put data on chain, we can only have up to 500 transfers, ERC20 token transfers, for example, per second, um, which is much less than Plasma is capable of. But if we compare it to Ethereum, it's just five tra ERC20 transfers per second, and PayPal does 160 on average. So until we reach 500, it's going to be a good problem to solve. And it's actually solvable. It will just introduce some more friction. So we're not doing this for now because there is no need for this. And second limitation is that rollup is based on zero knowledge proofs, which have some limitations in the way they are constructed. So we can only do fixed functionality for now. So in the first version, we're going to focus on ERC-20 token transfers, atomic swaps, and state channels. However, there is an EAP. Uh, for Ethereum, which is scheduled for the next hard fork, hopefully it will be included, uh, which will allow us to do arbitrary smart contracts in rollup, because we will support different elliptic curves, which allow recursion, and then we can verify proofs inside rollup of, of other proofs, which will allow us to, to do basically arbitrary computations. So let's deep dive into how it works. How many of you are familiar with zero knowledge proofs? So not so many. OK, I, I'm going to explain. Zero knowledge proofs are a cryptographic protocol which allows you to convince a verifier that you have completed some computation, which is uh, publicly known. That we, you, you have some function. We call it a circuit. This function is publicly known to both parties. 
you have some private input which you're not disclosing and you have some public input which is both uh, parties also know. Uh, and then you can provide a short proof which convinces that you perform the computation correctly without disclosing the X. So how we can use it for scaling? Two flavors of zero knowledge proofs, SNARKs and STARKs are succinct. The S in both state for succinct, non-interactive arguments of knowledge or transparent arguments of knowledge, which means that the amount of work you need to do to verify the proof and the, the size of the proof itself is much less than the amount of work you're trying to prove. So what it means, I can take 1,000 transactions or more and concatenate them into one very short proof. In case of SNARKs, it's going to be just 300 bytes. Uh, STARKs are significantly more expensive. Uh, that's why it's difficult to use STARKs for blockchain at the moment. But SNARKs are super short and it will cost you only 600,000 guests on Ethereum to verify. And it's constant. No matter how many computations you do, the verification will always cost you the same thing and the proof is going to be the same size. Um, unfortunately, this comes with a trade-off because SNARKs require a trusted setup and this was the main reason why they were not widely used in the past except for Zcash, which had a trusted setup ceremony. Well, trusted setup means that somebody has to prepare uh, some common reference string which we can use for generating proofs and verifying the proofs. Um, now, the, the, whoever creates this setup, if they keep some parameters, they don't delete the initial entropy they put in the setup, they can fake the proofs. So, of course, it's not um, ideal for blockchains if, if just one person would provide it. That's why we rely on multi-party computation ceremony where we can have N participants contributing their entropy to the uh, setup generation. And if at least one of them is honest and deletes the toxic waste, then the entire ceremony is, is solid and nobody can fake the proofs. So we have, like, you, you need 100% um, collusion in order to, to do something wrong. So this would work if not a problem that we need to do this setup for every application. It's circuit-specific in, in previous version of SNARKs. So every time you do an update or create something new, you would have to perform this, uh, this multi-party computation. And this is expensive, this is difficult from an organizational standpoint. But now we have uh, a new construct called Sonic Snark, which requires a universal trusted setup. So now with universality, the problem is practically solved because we can have a lot of participants contributing their randomness and the probability of them being all malicious is very low, especially if we have some highly credible, well-known participants. So we conducted the implementation of, of Sonic uh, proof of concept. The benchmarks are not quite there yet so that we can use it on top level, but it will certainly be usable as smart contracts inside uh, the top level construction, which also can be universal. If, if the top level circuit is some common functionality we all agree uh, upon which is useful, for example, verifying Sonics, it will be fine. So uh, this is being solved in this year and we expect even some, some more um, proof techniques, proof systems to appear this year, which are maybe even more uh, efficient than, than Sonics. Now, let's deep dive into how it actually works. Uh, we start with a sidechain state, just, in like, just like in Plasma MVP, we use account-based model which is represented by a Merkle tree of uh, accounts with their balances, with public keys, and we have a Merkle root. And with uh, a sidechain workflow is simple, we have main chain blocks, and uh, we submit transactions to the sidechain operators, they collect them in blocks, produce these blocks, and then we commit the Merkle root of the state change produced by the block on the main chain. And then after that, we submit a, a zero knowledge proof generated by the circuit, which verifies that every transaction in the block was correct. That we took the uh, some amount from the uh, from from account, uh, decreased it by this amount, we added this amount to the two balance, uh, and the amount did not exceed the, uh, the funds which a user had. And we, we can also have some other logic, logic on the arbitrary. And we, we calculated for all N transactions, for thousands of transactions. And we submit this proof also on the main chain, 
which is verified by a smart contract on the main chain. And only after this, it's verified, the state is final, and you can withdraw funds. And the the uh, star, uh, snark proof generation takes uh, it can take anywhere between one and, and thirty minutes, depending on the hardware you use. Uh, on average, we can we can just assume five minutes is going to be sufficient with good enough hardware. Uh, so how is all data availability? For each transaction, we submit some small amount of data. In our case, it's just nine bytes, which is compressed from index to index amount and the fee which we're paying on the main chain as call data in one big transaction. We're concatenating them all together, submitting one transaction, compute the hash of this data, and then we pass this hash as a public parameter in SNARK so that our zero-knowledge proof also guarantees that we used exactly the same data which we made publicly available. Um, so now, because we only use call data, so we, we just put data in, in, uh, on Ethereum without using storage, and we only put a very short delta of the state, it's much cheaper than actually having normal Ethereum transactions. So nine bytes of uh, call data costs you only like 700 gas. Whereas a simple Ethereum transaction is 21k gas, and a ERC token transfer is about 80,000 gas, right? Uh, so this is how we do this with uh, data availability, which unfortunately limits us to 500 TPS per, per second for now, but that, that's, that's quite good. Um, so yes, we have a, a working demo. You can visit it at uh, MetaLabs website. Um, unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate it now because it's not interactive. Uh, but it's working as a POC, and uh, we, well, this is the roadmap for, um, yeah, I want to make a picture. The current status is this. So the, there is a Bellman library called Bellman Community Edition, adopted by us to support Ethereum, uh, uh, pre-compiles uh, pre for Ethereum um, allowed um, BN 256 elliptic curve which is being widely used. I'm very happy to see this. Uh, we launched the POC, which can be tested and played around with. We conducted the test run of the MPC in Paris with an adopted software from uh, Zcash, which we changed so that it can be still run on a single laptop, despite the circuit size being really large, so that we can compress transactions. Um, and we also completed the implementation of the production grade prover. So now we're focused on doing the circuits and contracts for the first version, which will also add functionality of atomic swaps for DEX order settlements, for example, and uh, state channels, which will allow you to open, close, and update the state channel in the ZK rollup. And then we're going to undergo a security audit, and then it can be launched in production. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to follow up with some news soon, so f follow us on Twitter. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs>